Hey, and welcome to Alchemist Camp, where we learn elixir by building things. You may wonder, why would a coding YouTube channel have uh, MS Paint as its opening sequence? Well, the reason is, we spent several episodes getting the initial alchemist.camp website up, and now it's time to get back to the old lessons. So, we're going to go back to tic-tac-toe. As you may recall, tic-tac-toe is a very simple game played with X's and O's between lines. And like many games, it's easily modeled by states. So we're going to look at not all the states the board can be in, but we're going to look at all the states the game can be in. So at the very beginning, we're in an initial state where you need to choose which player goes first. Then either it's X's turn or it's O's turn to play. And we're going to call this state X's turn, we'll call this state O's turn, and this state is the initial state. So from the initial state, we could go either way. If it were chess, it would have to go from the initial state of the board being set up to white playing, but in tic-tac-toe, it might be X or it might be O. Then after, let's say O plays here, then it goes to X's turn. And if X went first, then it would be O's turn. Whenever X plays, it becomes O's turn. Whenever O plays, it becomes X's turn. But maybe the board is full, or maybe one of the players won. So we also have a game over state. That could happen from X's turn or from O's turn. And finally, since this is a computer game, it would be nice to report the winner so that the server can keep track of general statistics, something like that. And we'll call this the winner reported state. And the only way to get to the winner reported state is from the game over state. And every game of tic-tac-toe will follow this process. We'll go from initially having the board drawn to either X playing or O playing. And the way this happens is an action we'll call C, which is choose who goes first. And then when X or O play, it becomes the other's turn. Although sometimes when they play, it could become game over. And then after the game is over, the program reports the winner, and then we're at winner reported. And then maybe the player could decide to play again, and we would go back to the initial state. Um, even in more complicated games, though, it's usually not too difficult to model the high-level game states. It's very difficult to model all the board states in a game like Go or chess or say Starcraft, you'd have to model where every single Zergling is on the map. That would quickly become a problem that would exhaust all the space in your computer and all the computers on the internet. But you can model whether if players are playing yet, whether if the game has paused, whether if the game has finished, or whether if there was an error, something like that. And we're going to hard code these states into our Elixir program in what's called a state machine. And a state machine is basically just a set of states and actions. So in our case, we'd have initial state and a choose player and choosing the player X, that's going to lead to X's turn initial state and the choose player action with O will lead to O's turn um, with anybody else say initial state choose player any other possibility 
is going to lead to some sort of error, like say invalid player error, something like that. And similar, we could have a playing state, uh, or we could break it into an X's turn and a Y's turn state and get a play action from say X or from O and that might lead to it being the other person's turn or it could lead to game over depending on the situation and we have a game over state and report winner action this is going to lead to winner reported or to some kind of error. And it's going to work pretty much like that. And once it's all set up, we can use pattern matching in our function declarations to just take care of a uh, significant portion of error handling and making sure the program is always in a clearly defined state in a way that is very easy to reason about.